Corner, presented by Jennifer. Uzra, the First Green Cloak, Part 4. The next morning, Uzra lopped along the savannah, Tembo jogging easily next to her. Okuma, exhausted from the journey, had gone into the dormant state disappearing into a tattoo on Tembo's arm. They passed hippos sunning themselves in the Kavuin River, and a flock of sandpipers flew overhead, heading to their breeding grounds for the season. Finally, they reached an area where an acacia tree had been, where the acacia trees had all been cleared. For a mile, they passed only stumps and discarded branches. They crested a rise, and Tembo motioned to stay down. They crept forward in the grass and hid behind a large stump. On an even taller hill ahead stood the conqueror's camp. It was nearly a small city, and the center was surrounded by wooden stockades. By a wooden stockade. At the center, a central keep had also been constructed of wooden, of the wooden palisades. The tracks they were following led straight towards the camp. Tembo pointed to a small red flag of a lizard under a black conqueror's under the black conqueror's banner. That's Salama's insignia. It means she's there right now and holding court. The great beast muscles tensed. I will have her throat in my jaws. Tembo shook his head. There are too many of them. Our only chance is to get in and steal it. Isra glared at him. Throat? Jaws. The little warrior shrugged. Well, I see your point. Perhaps we might be able to fit in a little side mission. He looked back the way they'd come. Let's go meet the rest of the resistance. We'll need them to pull this off. Uzra left reluctantly. She would rather just have charged in and hunted down the conqueror woman. But Tembo had a point. There was an army in there and they were dug into their defenses. That night they met the resistance fighters at one of the trees still standing within a mile of the enemy fort. They had been burned out by, light, by a lightning strike and was a charred wreck not suitable for building. Several of the smaller ones cowered in the back, wide eyed and wide eyed wide eyes never having never leaving her huge muscular form. Urza could smell the fear coming from them. Even the most fearsome of them, a man full fully an arm taller than the rest, was gripping his axe so tightly it looked like the wood might splinter. He had the tattoos of a text of the Tekawas people running down his bare chest, intertwined with a Nilulian Nilo wild dog tattoo, his spirit animal in a dormant state. From what Uza knew of the local tribes, the Tekawa were ancient rivals of Tembo's Varanets. But the massive man gave Tembo a crushing hug as he arrived. Dekchita, Tembo said as he embraced the man. Goat thief, Dekchita answered with affection. Tembo introduced Uza to his fellow rebels. Dekchita, the big Tekwas man with a, the wild dog spirit animal. Kinwe, a bespectacled little man with an owl who peered down from them from the top of the tree. Jinta, a small, quiet girl with throwing knives and no apparent spirit animal, and several others. They were a ragged group, many of them a good deal younger than the usual age of Nilolian warriors, and they all wore an assortment of green cloaks and capes, from rough clothes cloth to what looked like a woman's decorative scarf wrapped around a little boy. These human children should have been playing in the streets of villages and helping herd goats and sheep to watering holes, not fighting a desperate resistance for their freedom. 
How could their village elders have surrendered and left this mess for them to fix? And yet, that was the way of the wild. Often the young mattered, matured fast or not at all. This was not Uzra's concern. She, had, she hadn't created this situation. Why do we need so many to sneak in and steal my talisman? Uzza asked. Steal your talisman? Tembo grinned. You're a madman, goat thief, Decata murdered, m muttered. We are going to do much better than that, Tempo continued. We are going to burn that place to the ground and their supplies and wagons along with it. Dendich had pulled back his cloak, revealing a cluster of water skins. Lamp oil, saltpeter, and birthwort extract. Liberate, liberated from a captured Zongian car caravan, he said, these could make a blaze from a heat, heated insul insulation insult. <laughs> Gentita gave a menacing grin and held up a chunk of flint. She struck it with one of her daggers, creating a shower of sparks. I'm here for my talisman, Uzza growled loudly, not a supply raid. All the resistant members save Tembo backed away from her nervously, their eyes wide. Dekita raised his axe defensively, and they slowed, however, slowly lowered, then slowly lowered it to his side. Tembo nodded. I am going after your talisman myself. The fire will be the perfect diversion. The leopard cocked her head at him. And what is my role supposed to be in all this little warrior? Tembo gave him, gave his infuriating grin. I'm going to ride you in, then jump from your back to the top of the tower. Over a short distance, you're much, much faster than I am. We'll be in and in before they can even close the gate. Uzo lowered a leveled a stare at him, a look that had frozen whole herds of wildebeest in terror. No human is going to ride me. You need a new plan. The two locked gazes for a second, but Uzo was unyielding. If this boy thought he could ride a great beast, he was going to find a claw through his throat. I am the mightiest predator and Nilo boy. I am not your beast of burden. Tembo looked at her for a long moment, but she stared back with complete resolve. He nodded. All right, we'll just have to be stealthy and hope we can get close before they raise the alarm. They struck out just before dawn. During the night, Genta had used the cover of darkness to sneak up to the enemy's palisade and weaken the, the stakes in a large section. Uzra crept forward, slinking through the grass alongside the green cloaked humans alongside the green cloaked humans. Though many times their size, the great leopard was more than able was a was more than able was a more than able stalker. When she did not wish to be noticed, I simply moved past her. They reached the palisade and she waited while Temba and Darajent quick quietly dislodged the wooden slats. How had she ended up here, reliant on humans to do things for her? She developed a certain fondness for her little warrior, but now a whole crowd of the smelly things surrounded her. Tembo motioned for silence. They huddled down as a pair of guards passed by on the wall above. The conversation drifted down in the early morning air. She's pushing us too hard, one of the conquerors was saying. The troops are exhausted. But she's got the talisman, the other answered. The last few tribes in the south are surrendering, and northern Nilo won't be far behind. She'll probably go after the lion caribos next. Uzza could almost hear the evil grin as the first man spoke. I can't wait to burn some of those villages once they surrender. The look on their faces is just priceless. And then we can finally leave this ugly mud hole behind, the other answered, their bootsteps beginning to recede. 
Uza started to growl, and Tembo put his hand on her flank to quiet her. She glanced at she glared at him, but grew still. Once the hole was clear, they each wriggled through and crept from be, from building to building on the other side of the stockade. It was still and calm inside, almost unnaturally peaceful. The rest of Tembo's warriors spread out and disappeared into the early morning grayness as Tembo, Derechus, and Uzra made their way to the central building. Derechus peered around the edge of one of the nearby make shift wooden shelters. Guards, little brother, many guards, he said to Tembo. We'll have to go in from here, go in from behind. They stalked through the outlying huts, making their way to the rear of the main building. It was only a small two-story thing, with rough stockade walls and a shingled roof. Derek just squ squatted and Tembo stood on his shoulders, bracing himself against the wall. With a low grunt, Derija pushed up and Tembro grasped the top wall. He pulled himself up to be even with the roof and scrambled onto the shinglings. Once Tembro was safely in, Derija just, just appeared into the morning fog. Uzo backed up and took a few steps and leapt to the top of the building. She soared through the air, a sleek arrow of predatory instinct. Another beast of her size might have made a crash, but she landed as delicately as a sparrow alighting on, on a branch. There was a trap door in the roof, which Tembo easily slipped through, but Uza had to wriggle and push her way in. The room was bare, not merely plainly decorated, but completely empty. There was even there were even marks in the floorboards where furniture had stood, but it was all gone now. Tembo crept to the stairs but looked back shaking his head nothing's there he whispered it's been stripped clean uzo glanced around the empty room her body tensing selima knew we were coming this is a trap as she said it a bell peeled outside tembro ran to the trap door and poked his head through it the pouring out of the building sealed fully armed and armored uzra flexed her muscles and bared her fangs. You don't try the great beast twice. I'll destroy them all. Tembro laughed. I like the enthusiasm, but maybe we could try something with a higher chance of my survival? Uzra glared at him. Solomon has the talisman around her neck. I have a plan. I just hope we they haven't caught the rest of our people yet. Tembro rubbed his arm absently. As soon as I have the talisman, Jump down and show them your claws. Uza said nothing. If he failed, she could still try a more direct approach. Samoa's voice rang out through the buildings. Come on, Kitty. I don't suppose you could make this easy. Just surrender and this will all be over. I won't even kill your little goat thief friend. A smile lit up Tembo's face. No mention of the others. This should work. Very well, little warrior. I'll give you a chance. But if this fails, you're on your own. Tembo shrugged and gripped his spear, heading for the door, while the leopard returned to the roof and peered down at the enemy. Tembo was right. They had been prepared for this. A horde of conquerors was surrounding the building, their armor giving off a dull gleam in the gray light. Hold on, I'm coming out, Tembo shouted from below. A moment later, he was facing off with Salama in front of the building. He looked tiny standing there with nothing but his spear and a green and green cloak, facing a wall of swords, shields, and spears. Samoa stepped forward, her smile showing off her unnaturally sharp teeth. Her lizard curled around her neck, mimicking her reptilian smile. Finally ready to surrender, goat thief? I think you'll find my dragon my dungeon quite comfortable. Tembro shrugged casually. Maybe. Do you have coconut? For Okuma, she likes a cup of coconut juice in the morning and the rest of the fruit for lunch. Selma express expression darkened. Drop your spear and surrender, boy, or I'll take it from your lifeless body. The leopard's sharp violet eyes could see her own talisman dangling on a strip of leather around Selma's neck. The amber leopard practically glowing in the pre-dawn light. The idea that this awful human... Sh 
sheared in Uzzah's power by wearing the talisman sent a fresh wave of fury through her. Selima gripped her sword, which would swing with vicious speed. Her movements aided by the hunter's instinct that Uz Uzra's talisman conveyed. Tembo struck t two fingers to his lips and let out a whistle that pierced the morning air. Then two things happened at once. First, the stockade shook with the sound of explosions. In four places around the camp, fire suddenly sprouted into the air. Conquerors spun around in confusion, pointing at plumes of smoke at the edge of the stockade. At the same time, Tembo struck out his arm. A streak of energy came off his wrist, and in a burst of light, Okuma appeared right on Salama's shoulder. It happened in a blink, too fast for even Salama's talisman heated speed, hastened speed. But the woman could, before the woman could think to react, Okuma gripped the talisman and ripped it from her neck. Uzra was stunned. The ability to control exactly where a spirit animal appeared was something she had never heard of. The two must have spent a long time practicing to learn this trick. Okuma jumped towards Tembo just as Salma swung at the monkey with her jagged sword. The woman's arm was fast, but no longer quickened by the power of the talisman. Okuma lengthened and burst into a light as she moved, and by the time the blade reached the monkey, she was nothing but a streak of energy. Tembo caught the talisman in his left hand, while Okuma appeared as a tattoo in the dormant state on his right wrist. Tembo raised the talisman in his hand, and Uzra leapt down. The leopard roared with joy finally able to strike at the enemy after so many days of pursuit. They had been distracted by the explosions. Their neat lines shattered. She easily charged through them as a discipline as discipline evaporated. Conquerors went flying, struck by a whirlwind of claws and fangs. For a long minute she let the rage consume her as she pressed her her revenge on the mass of enemy soldiers. Uzra purred gleefully as she saw Salama retreating, guarded by shield-bearing conqueror soldiers. It was only when the enemy fell back to reform that Uzra realized she had lost track of Tembo. She followed his scent through the smoke and found him lying on the far side of the camp, an arrow protruding from his left leg. He held he had a firm grip on the talisman, but wounded as he was, both were easy targets for the enemy. The scene was now cast in the orange glow of the tower. Towering flames lit up in, as tarry flames lit up the stockade. Buildings in the interior were starting to catch as well. Strad roofs going up in smoke first. Some conquerors were running, but Salama had pulled together a large contingent and was forming a shield a shield wall with them. In the firelight, her sharp teeth gleamed as she ordered her soldiers to prepare themselves. She caught Uzra's eye, and, she, and in her gaze was something that surprised the great leopard. Triumph. That's when she noticed the lizard. It moved like water, slithering over and past the injured temple, carrying away the amber leopard talisman as easily as a river abducts a leaf. Uzra yelled in sh a sound that shook the whole camp and lunged for the talisman. But it was too fast and already halfway up Selma's leg by the time Uzra had reached Tembo. There are too many, Tembo said, gra gasping for breath. I can barely move. Get your talisman back and run. You can still stop her. The enemy closed in, a curtain of steel. Behind the lines, Selma cackled in victory. Uzra weighed the options. Could she defeat them? Her sinew tensed and ready to charge in. One good blow could scatter them and break the wall. She had reserved, had reserved strength untapped, and the body of a great beast was an incredibly resilient thing. Uzra glanced at the brave little goat thief, trying to push himself up with one hand, his spear at the ready in the other. She might win her talisman back, but he was already hurt and would almost certainly not survive. No, little warrior, she said. You are going to live to continue this fight. She lowered onto her haunches. Climb on. Tembo did not 
didn't wait for her to ask twice, almost jumping onto her back despite his injured leg. Hold tight, Uzra commanded, and if you tell anyone about this, I'll eat you and your monkey both. She could feel Tembo gripping tightly to her fur. As the shield wall charged, Uzra lunged forward. She crashed through the end of their line, then accelerated down one side of the street. The flames had overtaken most of the stockade walls, including the gate. The heat of the dry season had left the fortification as kindling, ready to burn with the slightest provocation. She dodged, dodged past fallen timber from one building and a conqueror charged from another. They arrived at the hole that they had entered through, but it was blocked by fallen logs and smoke. They were both starting to cough as smoke began to choke the air. We need another way out, Tembo croaked. Don't let go, Uzra answered, picking up more speed as she raced across the ground. Finally, with a burst of strength, she leapt into the air. She could feel Tembo clinging tightly to her back as she barely cleared the bottom of the flame, leaving the fur of her feet singed. Uzra loped across the savannah, leaving the burning stockade to light up the horizon behind her. They s met the others at the lightning tree, where Jenna removed the arrows arrowhead from Tembro's leg, while Darkuta and the others held him down. A knife heated by flames cleaned his wound. Afterwards, the humans sat around the fire, retelling stories of the raid and the various mishaps and near disasters that had occurred. Though he claimed he would have survived anyway, to hear the others tell it, Deirdre had only escaped because a log had fallen on a group of enemies who had him cornered. Uzra sat out of the ring of firelight, staring into the savannah night. She had lost her talisman. For the humans, this was a celebration. But for her, it was as if part of herself had been torn away in the battle. She watched the moon drift up from the horizon. The conquerors would keep coming. She was sure of that. Though they had what they had come for, this reptile king would not stop until the whole continent was under his thumb. The whole world, perhaps. She had seen the, menace, the marching lines of them while in the cage. They were... It was just too many. Even a great beast couldn't kill them by, all by herself. Deraja says I'll be back in working order in a few weeks or so, Temba said, using a cr crutch to limp out of the firelight and stand next to the leopard. That is good, Uzra answered. They both remained silent for several minutes, watching a flock of black herrings wing across the night sky on their way to feed in the salt flats of the character del River Delta. Thank you, Tembo said finally. I don't know why you did it, but you did. All I can give you now is my gratitude and the promise that we'll keep searching for it. And keep fighting. Uzra lowered her eyes. Human promises. From this one, maybe that meant something. We got a message from my allies in Europe, he continued. When Uza cast a curious glance in his direction, he nodded somberly. People say the young King Thelenor of Ther Sterno has gone mad, and that he's aided by the great by great beasts as well. This con these conquerors aren't just in Nilo. They're moving across all of Eridus, and we must fight back wherever we can. There's a shipment of conqueror siege weapons coming into P Port T Tentigo next week. If we stop it, the city of Kalmada may be able to hold out through the wet season. Then you'll be heading there, I suppose, Isa said, looking away from Tembo once again. Though she did not show it in front of the humans, the news that some of her felt in front of the human, the news that some of her fellows were helping these plunderers deeply troubled her. She had not felt the presence of her neighbor Kovu recently. We're heading there, you mean, Tembo answered. I stole you, so you belong to me. We've been over this. I should just eat you now, you insolent boy, she rumbled. Tembo shrugged. What makes you think you could take me in a fight? Uza placed a massive paw on the boy's chest, letting it sit there for, so that he felt its weight. But Tembo just grinned back at her. 
You're nothing but a handful of kittens, Uza said, sprawling out and sl out to sleep. Without me, you'll just get yourselves killed for sure. I don't think I can give Thelema that satisfaction. Tembo smiled as he reached over and scratched the leopard behind the ears. Uza's claws extended, reflect extended re reflectively. She had, to, but she had to admit it felt good. She should put a claw through his throat for presuming to do this, but somehow she found herself purring. He had helped her out of a difficult trap. He had been willing to sacrifice his own life for her, for her amber leopard, even when she had turned a blind eye to his people. She could tolerate his impudence, she supposed. Just this one time.